Well, first I want to say, wow, thank you, Deirdre. <laughs> what a welcome. Thank you so much. Um, well, um, before I start reading, yeah, um, I started writing this book uh, a couple of years ago as my thesis project for uh, my MA in Visual and Critical Studies at the School of the Art Institute of Chica uh, Chicago. And one of the reasons I started writing it was that I got in this course that were, you know, dealing with all sorts of, you know, feminist theory, queer theory, um, uh, body politics, identity politics. Every time I started talking about being a mother, there was like, a, you know, shut this down right now. We do not want to hear about this in the context of, you know, artistic production. So, um, and critical theory and the rest of it, we do not want to have this messiness, you know, inserted into our kind of like, you know, clear-cut theories about how, um, and all the Freudian stuff and all the rest of it, you know. So um, so then I just decided, right, you know, if, when, if you don't want to have this discussion, I'm going to make you have it. Um, so I'm just going to write my thesis on it, and then we will have it for... Um, the duration of thesis one. And so after that, it just kind of like snowballed from there and the amazing Michelle Grabner decided to publish it, which was like a, a gift um, and very much speaks to how she creates space in the world for the maternal. So, um, so for me, the idea of modernism and being a modernist is also really about inserting this kind of you know, it's not only about mothering as an activity, but also really using the maternal as a as a the maternal energy as a strategy for art making, um, and to really kind of like uh, look at how those two come together. So I'll be reading a short text, which is actually not from the book because you can just buy the book and read it yourself. Um, about just that, and it's called Who's Your Mama? So, if we just rearrange a little bit here. So I can do this. Boom, boom, boom. Yo mama is so stupid, she ate a rotten fish while she was pregnant. Her tummy got so fat she walked all funny, and you were born with the wits of a silly little goat. This tree-tired insult is, if not the oldest joke in the world, one of our earliest recordings of the classic genre. It was written down by Icelandic monks between 1215 and 1230 AD in the saga about Bjorn the hero of Hiddo. The story revolves about the rivalry between Bjorn and Tord, who is at the receiving end of this insult. He swears revenge, and so the story begins. It ends by certain death, of course, which is too bad, but not as bad as death by poetry. Between the ridiculous and the sublime is but a small step. This step is a slippery slope called art, and that's why Christian rock does not work. It doesn't work because it wants its subject to remain solidly within the realm of the sublime. In the realm of the sublime reigns the iconography of the Virgin Mother. The Virgin Mother has nothing to do with your mama, because your mama is not a virgin, or she would not be your mama. Tearing your mama down from the pillow of sublimation deals a particular blow. It hurts. It hurts her, but it hurts you more, you think, which is why you flinch when you see her in the brazenly lit cathedrals of the Contemporary Art Museum. It is uncomfortable and embarrassing because it's a reminder of your slippery connection with her insides, inside a palace dedicated to the joys of sliding down the surface of things. It reminds you of some truths about your mama you would rather keep to yourself. Yo mama is as dirty as Mary Kelly's soiled laundry. Yo mama 
is as tender as Catherine O.P. Nursing. Yo Mama is as invisible as Miele Laderman Ukele's maintenance art. Yo Mama is as fierce as Rene Cox as Yo Mama reminding you that Yo Mama is Yo Mama is Yo Mama. In the conclusion to her book, Feminist Art and the Maternal, from which I plucked the example just mentioned, Andrea Liss recalls how, when she just started teaching her course, Feminist Art and Motherhood at California State University, in the first year, students understood motherhood and feminism to be an oxymoron. According to Liss, some of them even could not accept that the class is titled Feminist Art and Motherhood, not Feminine Art and Motherhood. To which she dryly notes, I never learned whether this small group ever made the transition from the feminine to the feminist. In my own practice as artist first and mother last but not least, I've come to see the act of giving voice, space, shape, and form to the experience of motherhood, as opposed to the classic iconography of its representation, within the discourse of contemporary art, in and of itself to be a feminist gesture. This sentiment echoes in the course evaluation from one of Lisa's students who says, and I quote, what is my current revision regarding motherhood? Who would I be as a mother? Through the work of artists such as Mary Kelly and Susan Hiller, the feminization of traditionally masculine scientific documentation beautifully illustrates the passion and activity of the mother mind. Renee Cox's photographs have stayed with me through their displays of strength and power, the, weight, the weightiness of motherhood. These artists have challenged my thinking and identity with their representation of experience making emotions tangible. I feel that the work of these mother artists has become the feminist mother I never had, end quote. I myself must add that growing up with a Scandinavian proto-feminist mother, these mother artists have become the, mother, the artist mother I never had. But too rarely do I encounter her in the canonized institutions of contemporary art, the museum in particular. Yo Mama cannot be contained within, uh, in within the contemporary art museum because she's too big and too insignificant for it at the same time. Her loving arms, the parenthesis that holds the sublime and the ridiculous together. Her gaze is supposedly sentimental or crazy or both. Her voice is shrill and demanding or heard and needy, a caricature. We don't want these sappy mother artists in the museum, giving us a piece of their motherly mind or offering us their maternal advice any more than we want maternal rock stars. All messed up and unable to tell their slippery insides from the slippery slide guitar rock solo of super rock and roll stardom. For this they may be punished, they must be punished, sorry, because you don't like to see your mama all messed up like that. Look at Sinead O'Connor, or look at Lauren Hill, or both, and then consider the ridicule they were dealt when opening their maternal traps to share their motherly concern for the next generation. The exception is Kate Bush, whose comeback concerts last year after a 35-year hiatus were the most hardly coveted seats in the house. She spent part of her retreat writing songs about washing machines, and raising her lovely, 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 lovely birdie. Mm -hmm. In that maternal madrigal, she's singing his praises and describing how you give me so much joy, and then you give me more joy. It is this impetus to nourish and protect those around you that give you so much joy, and then more joy, that I find a parallel between maternal, artistic, and curatorial practice a parallel that is perhaps most directly expressed in the practice I will call the mother house. In 1996, my longtime friend Jane Osterman Peterson, then fresh out of art school, made the bold and radical move of saying, shall I be mother? Although not in so many words. She instead took out a friendly priced lease on a dinghy space above a bicycle repair shop. 
To access it, you would exit the bustle of the red light district in Amsterdam, to turn down a narrow alley, open a ramshackle gate in a tall wooden fence, make your way past the simple bikes and their missing parts piled high both out and inside the cluttered shop, to climb a steep ladder in a far corner. From here, you would enter the space through a hatch in the wooden floor. The space, as I recall, was about 16 by 16 feet with a low ceiling, and under its exposed beams, two windows faced the canal. Jane precisely named the project after its address, the Leidecker Steeg, so that people would know how to find it, and with the byline Osterman Peterson Presents, gathered a litter of artists around her. Each of us were given the space for a month to do with as we pleased, on the condition that there would be some kind of show, performance, screening, opening, or party that was open to the public and that we would clean up after ourselves. Two years later, in the meantime, also a biological mother, Jane once again took the initiative, this time to build House and Park in the Flavor Park in Amsterdam. Although the name suggests otherwise, it was more like a pavilion made out of heavy MDF box modules the size of hay bales stacked in a, stacked in a brick pattern. Each module had a small window, allowing the light to be filtered in from all angles. As our mama was a red enough mother, the foundation to this house was made of Euro pallets stolen in the night from a nearby building site. With her powers of conviction, Jane got planning permission from the municipality of Amsterdam East to raise the temporary structure in the park and to host a series of events. They tried to revoke this permission as soon as they found out that the roof was not too cold. But thanks to their sluggish bureaucracy, we managed to keep it up for the duration of the summer. Since we had no permission to sell alcohol, we'll just bring our own. We could also bring our own audience. I even brought my own mother once. She enjoyed the show very much. In fact, I think this was one of the shows that I have taken her to that she enjoyed the most, even if she was not our target audience. Because there was no target audience really outside of ourselves. By grace of Jana's gesture and our own natural curiosity as to what would happen to these spaces as we moved through them, and how they would change as each of us took turns, the spaces themselves also became active ingredients, participants in our processes and the conversations around them. This kind of mother house model is not a new thing, nor specific to Europe, of course. These venues are part of the art scene wherever it exists, providing space and nourishment for artists and art that is not immediately, if ever, profitable. They do not deal in the patriarchal authority of the museum, nor in the mercenary business model, uh, business model of the gallery. This is also not the quasi-anarchic squatting strategies and groupthink of many artist-run spaces. Usually conceived as an organic extension of an already existing art practice, they are more about artists opening up their own spaces to provide shelter for others than about house intrusion or the claiming of territory. In Chicago, I had the pleasure of working with some real mamas. Michelle Grabner from the Suburban and the Poor Farm, Tricia Van Eck from 6018 North, Edra Soto from the Franklin, and Sabina Ott from Terrain. And these are not all biological mothers, but really work as mothers to the art community in a big, big way in Chicago. In conversation with Sabina the other day, she and I were re uh, reveling in the idea that Chicago was experiencing a real moment at the moment, exactly because of these houses and the particular crowd they gather. A gathering of people that are not cynical or jaded and not out of naivety, but as an informed position, deciding that they had enough of the tenor of the art world recently and has deci have decided to move on from this ironic position against the commod commodification of the flippant art market and maybe even anti-curatorial. Michelle says it best in her introduction to the suburban's history on their website. And I quote, we give complete control to the artists in regard to what they choose to produce and exhibit. Thus, it's a pro-artist and anti-curator side. The suburban is not driven by commercial interests. It is founded within the economy of our household. 
Its success is not grounded in sales, press, or the conventional measures set forth by the international art apparatus, but by the individual criteria set forth by the artists and their, exp- and their exhibitions. In this, the suburban is more closely aligned with the idea of studio practice than that of the site of distribution. End quote. As a practice, the mother house is closer to the compost heap than the archive, a site where ideas and categories can co-mingle and merge, melt and transgress boundaries in an organic way. Like a sourdough, something is added and something is removed while the mother remains, but not unchanged. Yo mama in the house that yo mama built. Thank you. <laughs>